So if you ever want to change anything, you've always got to do something completely different than what you're currently doing. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about extreme ways that you can save money really quickly on a low income. But if you search for this stuff on the internet, like on YouTube, for example, you're going to find a bunch of videos of people who are going to be telling you to do a lot of stuff like recycling your bath water or saving the water after you gargle all your toothpaste which is kind of cringe and yeah that stuff could save you money but realistically nobody really wants to do that right so i'm not going to tell you about any of that stuff but i will say that this video is really not for everyone because a lot of the stuff is just some things that you probably don't want to do or it's going to be really strange because it's going to be new to you so if you're watching this and you're the average person and you want to save money then here are some ways that you can actually save money but they're going to be really strange and kind of like the opposite of what the average person person is doing right now. Now, before that, just a quick reminder, if you're new here, my name is Ian. If you like this type of content, you want to keep these videos coming, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe with the notifications on. That way, you never miss the updates of when I post new videos. And if you guys ever want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can message me on Instagram. The link is down below. But with that said, let's get back into extreme ways to save money fast on a low income. Now, before you actually start doing frugal things or anything extreme to save this money, the first thing that you want to do is you want to set a goal. So for instance, let's say you want to save $25,000. That right there is a goal. And that is something that you can actually work towards. Now you're having a problem saving money because you don't really have a good enough reason to save money. And so there's something known as the technique of the seven whys. And basically this is you asking yourself why seven times about anything before you actually do it. And this will actually help you to want to achieve whatever goal you're setting. So for example, let's say your goal is to save $1,000 every single month. You're going to ask yourself, well, why do I want to save $1,000 every single month? And so that's going to be the first why. And so you're going to answer yourself and you're going to say, well, I want to save this $1,000 every single month because then I can pay off my car loan a lot faster. And so the second why is then, well, why do you want to pay off your car note faster? And so the answer to that is, well, I want to pay this car note off faster because if I paid off faster, then I'll have $1,000 free in my budget every single month. And then the third why is, well, why do you want to have $1,000 free in your budget every single month? And so the answer to that would be, for example, well, if I have $1,000 free in my budget, every single month, then I can start saving that money and putting it towards a down payment for my home purchase. And then the fourth why is, well, why do you want to go out there and why do you want to purchase a house? And so the answer to that is, well, I've been living in this apartment for the last five or seven years and I have nothing to show for it. And I'd like to buy a house so I can actually build some equity and at least get rewarded for all the payments. And then that would be the answer. And then the fifth why would be, well, why do you want to purchase this house and build equity? And so the answer to that is, well, it will help me to get to becoming a millionaire faster. And so now you ask yourself, well, why do you want to become a millionaire? And then the answer to that is, well, I want to become a millionaire because that will give me a sense of financial independence and financial freedom. And so the point here is you ask yourself why seven times and that way you actually know that this goal that you're trying to get to of saving a thousand dollars every single month is actually something that is important. And this is why you have to save this money. Now let's talk about things that you can do that are extreme to save money. And we're going to start by talking about some of the smaller stuff first, and then we'll talk about some of the larger stuff. So for example, it's like me going to the barber and I go every single week and I've got to pay $40. And on the surface, that doesn't seem like a lot of money. But if I multiply this by 52 weeks, then that is going to be around $2,080 per year. So you could easily be spending $2,000 every single year at the barber. And if you learn how to cut your own hair, then you could save that money. And that is a lot of money, especially if you think about it over the long term. So everything that you purchase or like smaller purchases that you make every single week, instead of looking at them as just like one uh, purchase or one-time purchases, you should always multiply them by 52 and then you'll get to see the true picture of how much you're actually spending on that purchase every single year. And that will kind of give you like a shocking idea of how much money you're spending on this thing. And so for example, if you're a girl, then maybe this may be like doing your hair or your nails or makeup, I don't know, eyelashes or something. But then maybe if you learn how to do this stuff and you do some of it yourself, 
then you could be saving thousands and thousands of dollars every single year, probably even every single month if you do it yourself, as opposed to if you spend like 50 or 100 bucks to do it frequently or regularly. So it's like the same thing for your phone bill or your internet or your cable or just about anything that you spend money on every single week or every single month. You always want to multiply it by 12 or multiply it by 52 to get the actual cost per year so you can actually see how much money you would save if you were to either cut back or just remove that expense entirely. So it's like the bundle of $150 for internet, cable, phone service, and all that stuff. And by removing most of it and just keeping the internet alone, I'm able to cut my bill down to around 50 bucks per month. So it saves me $100 per month. So that's $1,200 per year. If you add that to the savings from the barber, now we're at $3,280 per year. And there's a lot of other stuff that you could cut back on. For example, going out with friends every single weekend. If you're going out with your friends every single weekend and you're going out to eat or you're going out to party or whatever and you're spending like, let's say, 50 bucks or just $100 every single weekend, then if you multiply that by 52, you'll realize that you're spending anywhere from two to $4,000 per year on going out. So if you add that to what we just did, that'll bring it up to around $7,000 per year in savings. And then you can also look at other stuff, for example, like upgrading your phone every single year, buying clothes every single year, buying books every single year, buying shoes and all that stuff. And actually this stuff adds up to a lot. In fact, if you guys watch a lot of my videos, you'll realize that most of the shirts that I wear in my videos are kind of like the same. They're really similar, these uh, V-neck shirts. And the first time I went to the mall to buy these shirts, I found some of them and they were selling for around $7 each. And at the time, I just thought that this was a normal price. And so I bought some. And then one day I was in Walmart and I went to check the clearance rack at Walmart and I saw this shirt was there, like the same exact thing, a different brand, but it fit the same. And everything was really just about the same. And the shirt was for only $1.49. So then I saw the shirts like at the regular spot in Walmart and they were all for like $4.50 and then I realized that I could simply go to the clearance rack find the same exact thing for a dollar 49 cents and this would save me a lot of money because if I went to the mall to get the same thing I'd be paying over seven dollars so for example if I go somewhere and I see a deal like this and I know that okay this shirt is for seven dollars but I'm getting it for a dollar and 49 cents then I'm just gonna buy a bunch of them because I know that this is gonna last me a couple of years. I'm also saving a ton of money in the process. Also, there's some stuff that you don't have to buy brand new. For example, if you're gonna be buying underwear, then obviously you wanna buy that brand new, but if you're gonna be buying stuff like an iPhone or just a regular phone in general, then it doesn't have to necessarily be brand new. You could buy a refurbished one or a certified refurbished one, and that way you get a warranty with it and you pay a lot less than if you were to purchase it brand new. And also you can take advantage of like discount programs for example stuff like swag bucks or gas buddy that gives you rewards at the gas station or for example you can get yourself a credit card that gives you rotating rewards of five percent so for example i got myself the chase freedom unlimited and right now it gives me five percent in cash back at the gas pump and then for the next quarter maybe it's going to be like amazon or grocery stores or something else but this is another way that you can actually save a ton of money and yes you're making some extreme changes but it's not like recycling bath water Water or reusing mouthwash after you gargle it because that stuff is just weird and cringy. So the main point is this, if you actually add up all the small purchases that you're making every single week and every single month and you multiply them by either 52 or 12 and you add them up all together, you're gonna realize that you can save a couple thousand dollars and that's only if you're a single person like me. If you're actually married and let's say you got kids and all that stuff, then it's gonna be like five figures. You're gonna be saving like tens of thousands of dollars every single year. So those are the first extreme steps that you should be taking. Now let's actually move on to some of the bigger things or bigger expenses that you can save a lot more on. And so the first one I wanna talk about is food. And food is actually a really big expense for a lot of people. In fact, it is estimated that the average American is dining out roughly six times per week, which is pretty much just every day except like Saturday or Sunday when they're home. And they're spending just about $300 per month on eating out because they're eating out six times per week. And then they're probably buying breakfast, lunch, dinner snacks and who knows what else and so this adds up to over fifteen thousand dollars per year and that's a lot of money to be spending on eating out every single year i mean 
$15,000 is a lot of money. Now, if you want to be extreme, you can pull this off by getting like a couple of simple meal plans or a couple of simple recipes that you can do at home. And then you just have to have like five or six simple recipes that are easy and quick. And then you just keep on doing this over and over. And when you get tired of one recipe, you just switch to another. And this way you always have something to eat, but you're not spending all that money. For example, Dave Ramsey always talks about being on rice and beans if you're in debt and you're trying to save a lot of money. And it sounds really funny when he says it, but actually rice and beans and even chicken is relatively cheap if you buy and do like crock pot cooking. You can Google for like crock pot cooking recipes rice and beans and chicken and this will actually save you a ton of money every single week if you cook at home i mean you could go grocery shop and spend like a hundred dollars per week and you could still slide some snacks in there and some things that you like like treats and you'll still be able to eat and be filled every single week and that way you'll be spending around fifty two hundred dollars per year on food versus spending over $15,000. So you're actually saving $10,000 per year by simply making food at home instead of going out. And if you're in debt and you wanna save a lot of money, like you have some goal that you're working towards, $10,000 is gonna be a lot of money. Now, the second thing is the car you drive. So for example, I drive a 2014 Mitsubishi and I got this car really cheap like three years ago. I paid around $6,000 for it. And I got it cheap because one, it was a manual and people don't really like driving manual cars. So it was a bit cheaper. But secondly, this car was a one owner driven by a older gentleman who took really good care of it. It has low miles and he purchased all the upgrades and the options when he bought it from the dealer. So it has like the leather interior, it's got the sunroof, it's got the upgraded sound system, upgraded wheels and a bunch of other stuff that the regular car doesn't come with. And what I like about this car is that there's really no maintenance work because it's a really cheap car. It's a really simple car. It was cheap to buy. I don't have a payment. And also this car is really easy to work on. So for example, I had to go to Walmart to do an oil change. And I go there because again, it's cheaper. And they used to charge me, I think like $65. And the price may be a bit more now because this was before inflation and all that stuff. And then I realized that if I bought the oil and the filter and I simply just did it myself, I simply just slid underneath the car and did it myself, it takes like five minutes and I could cut that down in half. And you may be saying, well, Ian, how often do you actually do maintenance on your car? And actually, I do a lot of stuff on my car regularly. For instance, my car is detailed every single week and I wash my car, I polish it, I clean the leather, I do all that stuff. And if I were to pay someone to do this, it would cost me around a hundred bucks, but instead, I'm doing it myself. I buy all the stuff for cheap and I'm saving $100 per week. So while my car is old, it's paid off and it's not like a fancy car, I take really good care of it. I'm not spending a lot of money to do so and my car is actually in better condition than a lot of the cars that were bought brand new this year. And so when people say don't buy a used car because it's gonna be junk, that's just completely wrong because my car still looks and works like brand new. Also, if you're like me and you buy a cheap used car and you know that, okay, you know what, in uh, five to six years, I wanna upgrade this car, then you could start saving right now. You could put down like $150 every single month and you could save that. And then over a period of six years, you'd have over $10,000 saved up. And then you can add that $10,000 to the value of your car if you sold it then. And then you can use that money to buy a newer used car, which is gonna be newer and better. So that's something that's kind of like extreme, but not extreme to the sense where you're like, you know, driving a cheap beat up old car with a busted windshield, missing hubcaps, dents all over and stuff like that. Now, some other extreme ways that you can save money is by just saying no to vacations. And I know vacations are fun. Maybe you like to travel. I love to travel. And if you're trying to save money and you're trying to go extreme and you have some goal that you must get to, then just cancel the vacations for a while. Just cancel vacations for the next three to five years. Instead of going on vacation, you can live vicariously through someone else. So for example, if you find like a YouTuber that does travel vlogs, you can watch the vlogs and just keep it in the back of your mind that in five years, you'll be able to go out there and do this and this is how it's gonna be and then you can actually look forward to doing it instead of doing it right now and actually spending the money right now. I mean, for example, if you wanna travel anywhere, especially if it's outside the country or even if it's inside the country, it's gonna cost you upwards of $1,000 usually. I mean, depending on where you wanna go, but if you bundle like flights, hotels, stuff to do, eating out and all that stuff, it's gonna cost you a couple hundred dollars, if not thousands. So that 
that is how you can save a couple thousand dollars every single year if you cut off your vacations. Now, here's another extreme thing. Your impulsive spending is preventing you from saving, investing, and acquiring anything that's gonna help you to build wealth or obtain a goal, and fixing this is actually easy. If you find that you're already spending impulsively, then all you gotta do is to implant the 72-hour rule, which is a rule that says, hey, if I wanna purchase something, I need to wait 72 hours before I pull the trigger and make that purchase. And usually, if you think about it for 72 hours, you oftentimes come to the realization that the thing that you wanted to purchase just two days ago is something that you really want, but you don't actually need it. And that way, you don't actually go and make that impulsive purchase. So for example, you wanna purchase the new iPhone 14 and you think it's a necessity when in reality, you don't really need it. So you think about it for three days, and then after three days, you find out that, hey, you know what? I just really want this phone, but I don't actually need it. So you prevent yourself from making that purchase, and then after three days, or if after three days you still want it, then more than likely it's actually a need and not just a want. And this is a simple rule that helps you to reduce the amount of impulsive purchases that you make every single year. So we talked about stuff that could save you just a couple hundred dollars to thousands of dollars per year. And then we talked about stuff like eating out and getting a cheap car, doing maintenance yourself and all that stuff, vacations that will save you tens of thousands of dollars per year. And now we can talk about the really big things that will save you a lot of money. So for example, your housing. It's really easy to overspend on housing. So for example, when I was looking to purchase a house, the mortgage company and the realtor and all these people were trying to get me to buy a brand new house that was gonna be like at the very top of my budget. Now, in fact, I felt like they were just trying to max me out because they wanted me to spend like the maximum amount that I could be approved for. And yet the houses that I was shown, they were really nice houses in really nice neighborhoods, but I never really needed that stuff. So I chose to opt for an older house that was still fine. And I was able to save over $150,000 by buying an older house, which means I'm gonna be able to pay it off a lot faster. And also the mortgage payments aren't going to be eating away at like 50 to 60% of my monthly income. So for example, if you're a single person, you may want to live in a four bedroom house with a pool, three garages, a bunch of extra rooms like a movie theater room, a game room, a big yard and all that stuff and that's completely fine. But if you really want to save money and you want to do extreme things to save money, all you gotta do is cut back, just find yourself a nice two bedroom house or a nice three bedroom house, something smaller, and you can actually save a ton of money. So the house purchase is going to save you hundreds of thousands of dollars, especially with the interest on there. And the second thing is your partner. So if you're a guy, your girlfriend, or if you're a girl, your boyfriend, or you know whatever it is that you're doing, or whatever you're into. But the point here is, who you choose as a partner is actually very important and has a lot to do with your spending. So for example, if I'm a frugal guy and I'm living like Dave Ramsey says on rice and beans and maybe some chicken every single day and I'm in a relationship with somebody that wants to go out and eat prime steak every single night, then that's not really going to work because that's gonna cause me to spend what, 50 bucks every day or 100 bucks every day, which is gonna add up to around $18,000 in eating out every single year. Now, if I was with someone who was like me, who is also trying to be extreme, or maybe not even extreme, right? Just trying to save money or not waste a lot of money, especially if they haven't reached their financial goals as yet, then you'd be on the same page. And so both people wouldn't try to get the other person to go outside of the budget or spend a whole lot more money. And that way you can actually stay in line with your savings goal. You can actually be extreme with savings without it costing you a lot. Now, the next thing is you getting a salary increase at your job or you getting a promotion or you getting another job and your income goes up. And so normally the first thing that you think is you think to yourself, well, hey, I got this new income, I've got more money coming in every single month, so now I can upgrade my lifestyle. But instead, if you wanna be extreme, instead of upgrading your lifestyle, you should keep your lifestyle at the very same level, and then all the extra money, you either save it or invest it or use it to do something that can make you more money. And for example, if you're making $3,000 every single month after taxes and you get a salary increase and now you're making $4,000 every single month after taxes, instead of getting like a nicer apartment or getting a nicer car, what you should do is you should live the same lifestyle and take that extra $1,000 per month and save it or invest it, which is going to be an extra $12,000 per year for you. 
Also, where you live is important, and this doesn't necessarily mean like the house that you buy or the apartment that you live in, but more like the state or city where you live. So for example, if you're living somewhere like California, for example, where rent is super expensive when compared to just about everywhere else, and you have a job where you can work online or you can move to a different state and you can also pay less in taxes, then that could be a smart move for you because you're not really changing anything with your lifestyle. You're just moving to somewhere else. You'll still have the same income or roughly about the same income and you could actually just start saving more money without really changing anything. Now, this is still an extreme thing to do because you're moving from a place that you know and you're used to and you're going to a completely different place so it's still kind of extreme. So if you add all these things together that I just talked about in this video, you're gonna be saving hundreds of thousands of dollars with these extreme things and you can save money very quickly and you're pulling this off without one gargling mouthwash and then reusing it, which is kind of nasty if you ask me, just personal opinion, and also reusing your bath water because like I said, this stuff is kind of cringe and nobody truly wants to do that. I don't believe that the people that are actually doing this stuff enjoy doing it and they actually truly want to do it. So the main point here is these are the extreme ways that you can save a lot of money very quickly on a low income. And with that said, I hope this helps you if you're trying to save a lot of money very quickly. And also don't forget the seven whys rule or the rule of the seven whys where you ask yourself why seven times before you create a goal for saving because then it actually gives you a really good idea of why you want to save and why you need to do all this extreme stuff to get to that goal. So as always, thanks for watching. If you like the content, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe with the notifications on so you never miss the updates of when I post new videos. If you guys ever want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can message me on Instagram. Link is down below. But with that said, all the best with making and saving more money. And I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one.